Okay, say here's imaginary numbers, okay? Let's say I have a function and I want to find out the zeros of this function. So I, I want to figure out where this thing is equal to zero at, okay? Um, you might notice that right first of all that it never crosses the x-axis and this is just y equals zero, okay? Um, so, so if I, were to, if I were to look for the zeros traditionally, I would set this, this, the function equal to zero and I would go ahead and solve it. But, you know, it, it, it's never equal zero. Never. Okay, and, and let's even, let's try to do it anyway and we'll see what happens. So what do we get? We get, let's see, this, this simplifies to, I just move, I subtract one from both sides. And then I get x squared is equal to negative one. Okay, so I get, so I take the, the square root of both sides and then I end up with x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative one. Okay, well what, what two numbers do I multiply together that give me negative one? Okay, well it turns out to, to get around this problem, um, mathematicians actually defined a number, okay, and you've probably already seen it by now, um, but it is i, it is the imaginary unit, and it is defined to be the square root of negative one. Okay, so we could go over here and we could say um, that x is equal to plus or minus i, okay? So let's here, before we do that, let's, let's square both sides of this. So we get i squared is equal to square root of negative one squared. Okay, so just going up the ladder here, so we get i squared is equal to uh, square root, squaring a square root just kind of cancels it out. So i squared is equal to negative one, okay? So let's just go ahead and make a note of that. So i is equal to negative one, and i squared is equal to negative one, square root of negative one over here, okay? So, all right, so let's see here. Let's just uh, kind of get in the hang of working with these imaginary numbers, and he here's how I do it, okay? So. We, we already figured out that they're they're pretty handy for taking the uh, square root of a negative number okay and first of all um, th these are not this is not a real number it is imaginary I can't give you I t-bone stakes or something like that you can't have this much money in the bank or anything like that okay but let, let's just get you let's just get familiarized with how to operate here okay. So negative 25. Well, it's pro it's true that I could rewrite this as 25 times negative 1, right? So I take 25 times negative 1. Since I got since I'm multiplying here, I could break this radical up. I can go square root 25 multiplied by square root of negative 1, right? Okay, and that simplifies down pretty easily. And the square root of 25, I'm just going to use 5. Even though it's plus or minus five, I'm just gonna use the principal square root to show you. And let's see here, square root of negative one, well that's just i, right? So we get five i. So let's just take five i and multiply it by itself. And then we get five or 25 times i squared, which is equal to 25. Remember i squared is equal to negative one. So there we are, we're back to 25. Okay, so let's see here. What do we get? How about um, negative 16? Let's just equal to negative 16. It's negative 1, which is just negative 16 times negative 1, which is equal to plus or minus 4, but for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to leave it as regular 4. Okay, and uh, square root of negative 1 is i. Okay, so, um, you know, basically that's uh, that's where we go with this. Okay, so um, that is kind of how they work. Um, let, let's do another one. Actually, let's go, let's go negative 20. Okay, that's not a perfect square. So what, what could I do here? Well, I'm just gonna get, write my negative one out there. I'm gonna write my 10 
times 2. Okay. And then I think I'm going to go to negative 1 is equal to 5 times 2 times 2. I just factored the 10 out that was in the middle. So remember, if I, if I have a pair of numbers inside a square root, I can pull the pair of numbers out. So I'm going to pull the 2 out. Okay, and that's just going to leave me with, it looks like, negative 1 times 5. Okay, and let's see here. That gives me uh, 2 radical 5 radical negative 1. The 2 radical 5 does not simplify anymore, but the other part does. Okay, now it's very important that you do not write you know the I under the radical sign because remember this this right here this is radical negative one is which is equal to I so sometimes when I when I get these uh, square roots like this I might actually just put a parentheses around them and then I might do it like that okay let's go back to the other piece of paper real quick and I don't want to waste too much let's um Let's see if we can't figure out another one real quick. Maybe a non-traditional square root. How about the square root of negative 28? I don't know. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna factor this like normal. So it's negative one. And I'll go 14 times two. Okay, and that's equal to negative one times seven times two times two. And like always, I get the pair of numbers here. See, 7 times 2 is 14, times 2 is 28, so we're good there. So I'm just going to pull the 2 out now, and I'm back there. I'm just left with 7, negative 1. Okay, which uh, that one just reduces down to 2 radical 7 times i, okay? because just like remember 2 radical 7 radical negative 1 is what this goes to because we can break it up and if you're like me like I said sometimes I just like to do it like this just so I know that these are grouped together and the I I don't accidentally write it underneath the radical sign because sometimes on more complicated examples you will end up with an I under the radical sign so you know you don't you don't want to get confused okay so that's it that's imaginary numbers that is the imaginary number. Actually, I think there's only one imaginary number. Yeah, I think there is. Don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure there's a, there's only one imaginary number, and that's it. Okay? All the rest of them are what we'll explore in the next couple of videos, and they're called complex numbers. Okay? And, and that's, what, that's where we'll get into graphing these and, and some more things. So, so we'll get into complex numbers and all that stuff uh, coming up next. Okay? Thanks for watching.